Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 55 and in this episode I'm going to share with you all the new changes in Google Apps that took place from mid-August up until today so let's find out what's new. Let's start with the YouTube app and if you have a premium subscription you might see this card on your home feed talking about a new experimental feature that will allow you to watch YouTube videos together with people if you are in a Google Meet call. So after tapping on the try it out, the feature will start showing up in your Google Meet app. So let me show you how it works after initiating a Google Meet call between my Pixel 6 Pro and the Pixel 6a. So now I have a Google Meet call on both devices and now I'm gonna go to my YouTube premium subscription while having the call already initiated and then tap on any of the videos. And as you see here, I'm getting this floating card saying start live sharing with meet and when I tap on start that should allow me to watch the same video on the other side but unfortunately the feature doesn't work as expected so let me try another video here and then tap on start but on the other side nothing happens as you see here I don't have anything to do but when I go to activities and then tap on YouTube open YouTube still I cannot live stream the same video at the same time so I'm not sure when the feature will be fully functional but this is how you can activate the feature so please give it a try and let me know in the comments if it worked with you change number two in the YouTube app is the support for the new media controls of Android 13 and as you see I have the new play pause button if the video is paused you will see a circular play button and when you start playing it will change into a rounded square with the uh, forward and the backward buttons on the sides of the progress bar next youtube music and the first change is the summer recap of 2022 this is an automatically created playlist based on the songs you played in the summer the most and you will get a notification first once the recap is ready once you tap on it it will start playing the songs and as you see here it's also available under your library and you can see it in the recent activity when you tap on it you will see 50 of the most played songs in the summer of 2022 so you can listen to them one more time change number two is the ability to share songs to your instagram stories so here is one of the songs i'm going to share and you will notice this new instagram icon tapping on it will create the story for you it will include the album art and the song information and lastly you will see the youtube music icon here at the bottom this is exactly the same thing we saw before with snapchat so let me share the same song one more time choose snapchat and you will see the exact same design and lastly youtube music got a slightly different themed icon as you see here the youtube music logo is now bigger instead of the smaller one like before next nearby share and now there is a new feature called self sharing this feature will allow you to share content from your device to any other device signed in with the same google account without the need to tap the accept button for the content to be transferred and you don't even need to unlock your phone and to show you this let me bring two phones one of them signed in with the same google account like the pixel 6 pro and the other one is signed in with a different account to show you the difference so here's a quick demo for the new feature and this is one of the photos that i'm going to share with those two devices the pixel 5 is signed in with the same google account as the pixel 6 pro and the pixel 6a is signed in with a different google account so when i tap on more and then choose nearby share as you see here the pixel 6a i have to interact with because it's signed in with a different account and the pixel 5 is showing up without doing anything on the device you will also notice here this uh, small separator all the devices on the left are the devices that already signed in with the same google account so you don't need to do anything or to interact with the other device and anything else on the right is the devices that are nearby and in this case this is the pixel 6a so for example when i tap here on the pixel 5 you will see here that transfer will start without me interacting with the pixel 5 by any means and that request has been accepted automatically and let me also lock the pixel 5 and try this one more time nearby and then choose the pixel 5 and you will see here the transfer is done and let me unlock to show you this once i unlock the device i see here that i received a new item 
with the device already locked. And now it's time for today's sponsor. If you are interested to purchase original Windows 10 and Office keys, head over to cdkeyoffer.com using the links in the description below. Then apply my special promo code ID20 to get extra 25% discount. Windows 10 OEM key will cost you $16.23, which is very affordable. To complete your purchase, choose your preferred payment method, input the details, and once the payment is done, you will be redirected to the orders screen. To view your code, click on the view keys slash codes button, then click on get the key. To activate your Windows 10 OEM key, copy the code from the website, head over to your Windows settings, then system, scroll all the way down and click on about, then product key and activation, and finally click on a change. Paste the code in the text field and click on next, then activate, and now your original Windows key got activated. For more offers, please check the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the review. Next, Google Photos. And the first change is in the info pane. Now when you scroll all the way down to the details, you will see two new items. The first one will show you the image size on the device. And the second one will show you the image size on the cloud. Change number two is in the search. When you search for anything and then scroll all the way to the left, then tap on more to filter the results, you will see everything in a much bigger floating card that includes everything without the need to scroll up or down. Next, Google Messages. And now you have the ability to customize the swipe action. And as you see here, when I swipe to the right side, I can delete the conversation with the same animation that we saw in the Gmail app before. And to set this feature, you can simply tap on the profile picture, then go to messages settings, and you will see this new menu item called the swipe actions. Tapping on it will allow you to customize the right and left swipes. When you tap on customize, you can choose between archive, delete, or you can turn off this swipe entirely. And in my case here, I have it activated only to delete by swiping to the right side. Uh, and also if you have the feature activated for the first time, when you open the app, you might see this card to let you know that the feature is now available. And when you tap on the customize button, it will take you to the same exact settings page. Next, Google app. And now when you go to the discover feed and the tap the ellipses, you will see slightly different options to identify the topics you are interested in. So for example, there is a new option here that will allow you to choose a specific topic. So in this case, it says not interested in Google Pixel. So you can still get content from Android Authority, but only stop getting things about Google Pixel if you would like. And when it comes to the YouTube videos, you also have a new option here that will allow you to stop seeing content from this specific YouTube channel. The second change is the new option under the profile menu called results about you. And as you see, it's still in beta. When you tap on this option, you will see this page. This feature will allow you to remove any personal information about you from the web in case you found any. And if you want to learn how to do this, it will tell you to search for your full name in Google search, and then you can explore the results. If you found any personal information that you are not happy to share with others, you can simply tap the ellipses next to the results and then choose to remove the result. Then Google will look into it and then your requests will appear under this section. You have here in progress, approved, denied, undone, and so on. And once your request is approved, you should see it over here. Or if your request is declined, you should also see it in this page. So this will give you more control over your personal information that appears on the web. Next, Gmail. And it only got one small visual tweak, which is the removal of the text labels from the icons in the bottom navigation bar. So for example, previously, this icon used to have the word mail underneath it, and this one used to have the word meet, but now all you get is icons. Next, the Pixel Buds Pro. If you have the latest truly wireless headphones from Google with the noise cancellation feature, you should be able to control your noise cancellation directly from the volume controls by pressing the volume rocker and then the ellipses button. And you should see here a strip that can allow you to switch between noise cancellation, transparency mode, or turn the feature off entirely. And because I don't have the Pixel Buds Pro, here's a screenshot from an article by 9to5Google showing how it looks. As you see here, it has the three different modes I just mentioned. Not only this, but when you also access the Bluetooth settings page of the device, you should see the same toggles over here without the need to open the Pixel Buds Pro 
app. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to show you in Google Apps. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if you spotted any new feature that I didn't mention so I will include in my future videos. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you the next video.